This is Long Way to the Top, and I'm your host, Shane Bryan. Aussie rock guitarist Ronnie Simmons has had an incredible career working with uh, Richie Ramone from the Ramones, Faster Pussycat, and currently touring with Rose Tattoo. He's got a new band, the Redback Spiders, and a brand new single, and he joins me on the show. Ronnie, welcome to the show. Hey, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, look, you've had an amazing career. And I guess just to, to sort of uh, kick things off, uh, just for our listeners, uh, we, we all heard the news that Angry wasn't, uh, wasn't that well, uh, that he's back in hospital. Is he okay? Everything's okay. He's not in hospital. He's home. He's all good. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, it'll be great to see him and uh, you guys back on the road again. And uh, how's the tour been going uh, so far with, with uh, Rose Tattoo? Oh, man, like since I jumped on board with them at the start of last year, like I'm loving it. Like we yeah. we gel so well and I'm seeing parts of, you know, being Aussie born and raised, but living over in the States for 10 years. Yeah. I got to a point where I realized I'm going, I've kind of seen more of America than I have of my own country. And now after being in the tats, I'm getting to go places I, you know, I, I'd never been before and I'm just loving every second of it, you know, getting, mm. you know, Getting in the trenches, like hand to hand yeah. combat with you know Australia, I love it. Like it's, the fans are so great, the, the the band's on fire, and I feel very at home. It's, it's lovely. Yeah, and it's funny because you know uh, when I heard that you you joined the the, the Tats in in 2023, but then a year before that you were actually uh, you know with Faster Pussycat, which mm. is very much. I mean, it's kind of like you know glam rock to like down and dirty pub rock. Uh, from a certain point of view, yes, but I can guarantee you because I spent a lot of time on the Sunset Strip, yeah. all those bands, you name it, Guns N' Roses, Foster Pussycat, LA Guns, Jet Boy, those the, the Rose Tattoo fingerprints are all over those songs. Yeah, right. Like they all had those early records and, you know, Junkyard still cover Nice Boys and Rock and Roll Outlaw all the time, as, yeah. you know, as well as BNR, of course. But it was very, very interesting learning a lot of these songs by these bands and you know especially coming from an aussie rock background yeah going ah, uh, I can, okay oh, i can see I can that see this. you know it's yeah and it's really cool like yeah. it's really really cool and especially like faster pussycat like you know they're kind of the the inventors of i guess what you call sleaze rock yeah you know yeah. and they were in that category with jet boy guns and roses at the cat house that's mm. very different to poison yeah, you know, yeah, a bit like Faster Pussycat, you know, they, they're they're tough and sleazy. It's not, you know, it, it's not poison or, you know, they they kind like, of come around, you know, that 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 whole sort of uh, era when you know you're you're moving away from poison, you're moving away from your your hair metal bands, and then you things you're, got more street. Yes, yes, like, more street. You know, like, yeah, like and you know, like Faster Pussycat and Guns N' Roses, basically, you know, they they were that was the same circle of people, like at the yeah. Ricky Rack ricky rackman's cat house so yeah. it's it's one of those things that it it works yeah and you know um i'm i had a great time out there but it's definitely really good to be home like because you know the, the tats have been like my favorite band since i can remember yeah so yeah you know, to, to be able to you know you, you know you live away that long you know i was the only australian in the room for a long time <laughs> Like, so, you know, homesickness, you know, could hit me. And now to come back, like, as a member of, like, I, you know, arguably the most Australian band ever. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I'm back and yeah. I'm taking it to like a fish to water. I love it. You're 36 years old and, uh, you know, you, you'd have to be the youngest member in Rose Tattoo. Yeah, that, that's been a reoccurring theme with a lot of, a lot of bands I've worked with. Yeah. So it's, you, you know, kind of come I'm, in after, after, I guess, you know, they're sort of their heyday, but then you're there during the touring with these bands like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some other bands too, like, you know, Richie Ramone. Uh, mm. we, we, we talk about, um, you know, you did you did work with um, Tommy Henriksen from Hollywood Vampires. I mean, you've come in uh, as in, in touring capacity when – all of their songs, they're not trying to break new ground. Their songs are part of a legacy now, and you're there oh. just playing away. Yeah, it, it's really, really cool because at the end of the day, like I started off as a fan. Like that's how yeah. I got into yeah. music. So to be up on the stage and, 
you know, seeing people's reactions from the stage and mm. just you know, having the time of their life. Like, I'll never forget, we did one gig and it was like, I saw a guy who was crowd surfing that I was like, that looks like my dad. <laughs> and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I was was it like, your dad? Like, I was just like, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Like, but the, the fact that, you know, I can be a part of something that makes anyone feel that way. Like, you know, that goosebumps feeling yeah. you get when you hear your favorite song. Like, it's incomparable. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't take a second of it for granted. But of course, you know, it, it is a job too. I take it yeah. very, very seriously because I, I understand the weight of the legacy that's on my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you talk about that age difference between, you know, uh, uh, the older and, and, and the, the, the young up and coming. There's bands like, like the ones that you're, you've been in and, you know, other bands like Metallica and, uh, you know, even, you know, Offspring, Linkin Park. They've all got this legacy of older audiences that remember when they first, you know, had hits. And then you've got the the young ones that are rediscovering this music going, man, this stuff rocks. That That's exactly it. And I was one of those younger kids like yeah. 20 years ago. And it's one of those things that if there's any way I can bridge a gap or introduce younger people to new music, and, you know, feel an iota of how it made me feel, that means the world to me. Yeah. Because that's, you know, and, and Father Time's an elephant in the room. Yeah. Like, I just want to, you know, the analogy, like someone said to me, they're like, you're not exactly reinventing the wheel. I'm like, yeah, yeah consciously. The wheel's awesome. Who wants to reinvent <laughs> the wheel? The wheel works. Yeah. It's more a matter of, you know, putting some new rims on it and making sure a really kick-ass classic car doesn't go out of production. Yeah. Because... Yeah. It's, you know, there's nothing like rock and roll. Like that, like I said, that feeling, it's like lightning hits you when your hair stand up on your arm and it, it's like a wave over your whole body. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. And whether, you know, I'm in the crowd watching one of my favorite bands or if I'm on stage playing it, it's yeah. like just a part of it means the world to me. Now, you actually started out busking, you know, in Sydney, in yeah, Newtown. Yeah when, I was, yeah, when I was about 12 years old. Wow. Wow. And yep. then, then you, you know, you're touring with all of these bands. You even toured with like the Screaming Jets. Uh, you know, do you look at that and go, well, you know, it was all part of my, the, doing the hard yards busking was all part of that growth into what you are oh, now? Oh, yeah. It's, it, it's like, you know, I, in a very, in the most humble way possible, I definitely feel like I've paid my dues in that regard. Yeah. Like, I, but far out, like part of my busking repertoire, it was like Livewire, Basie, DC, Rock and Roll Outlaw, Nice yeah. Boys by the Tats. Um, I think I used to do uh, Shadow Boxer by the Angels. Yeah. And, and then, you know, I got into the Ramones and the Sex Pistols. Yeah. And I, I just, I'd, I'd, I'd finish school, like I was in, I think, seventh grade at Newtown. And I'd grab my little beat up acoustic guitar and I'd go sit outside the National Bank on King Street, which is like a few doors down yeah. from Hum Records. And I'd put a hat out and I'd just sit there and belt away until either my fingers were bleeding or my voice ran out. And, you know, at, at, I, I, that's how I got into all the music I got into. Because, I, you know, I, at first I'd average about like 30 or $40. Yeah. And I, I'd sit there until basically the sun went down. Yeah, and yeah. when I, I got, you know, it was like stacks of coins. I had this like hat full of coins. And I'd go to hum. And I'd walk up to the CD shop and dump them on the counter and it'd be like, all right, I'll take Scarred for Life. I'll take uh, <laughs> you know, All for One Screaming. And I'd go home and then I'd learn those songs and then add them to the repertoire and yeah. until eventually I was doing it one day and some older guys walked past and went, you in a band? I'm like, uh, I'm 15. And they were like, well, we, you know, let's start a band. And so wow. that, that's how the transition happened. And I, it went from sitting on the street basically yelling at people bashing on this guitar <laughs> you know uh, you know then i'm in a i'm in a band and then i'm on on a stage at a pub and I, they just that's yeah. that's kind of how it started yeah yeah i love that i love and it just shows do you ever do you ever want to go back and and busk again every now and then just to to read oh, it yeah, go back to your roots uh, again I'm, I'm, oh that, that's not a bad idea I, you know i might, I might do that down the yeah. summer's coming so a, a lot of bands a, a lot of uh, you know guitarists and singers even do that um, i know john butler you know he's a little bit different roots and blues but yeah. he will always go and and uh, whenever whatever town he's performing in you know if he's got a, a spare day he'll go and busk in the street you know and yeah. I, I think it it just so shows 
that you're not that you you're looking at, at your at, at where you've come from and gone, yeah, okay, that's a really important part of my development. Oh, uh, totally. And that that's that's very much in my consciousness all the time. So I yeah. think that's a really good idea because yeah. you know, the first single I did off my EP alone with you that we, you know, that was shot on Sydney Harbour. That the main gesture behind that was like, hey, everyone that I've met along the way, this is where I'm from. This yeah. is home. Yeah. And you know, this, you know, I wanted to kind of share that with the world, but um, back back to I just remembered a really funny busting story off the top. I yeah. just popped into my head. One of the other songs that um, I ended up closing the set with it in my first band when I was fifteen. We were called the Skanks. It was very <laughs> Ramones. Yeah, yeah. Very we all Ramones. we all had this. Hair, we had this. We all had this haircut. It was very Ramones. But we'd finish our set with, with the Skyhooks. Why don't you all get fucked? Yeah. And I rem- that was in my busking repertoire. And I'll never forget one day someone came, like someone got really staunch on me. And I would have been like 14, this little tiny skinny kid. And they're like, you can't say that. Like, think of another <laughs> word. There are children walking around. And I'm going, I'm just singing the song. Calm down. <laughs> but, oh, man, like that, they were not happy. No, it was, no. and, and to think back, it's like, you know, to have the balls at that age, just sit there fucking yelling that at people. <laughs> just walking about that, like. And and also back then it wouldn't be uncommon for someone to come and just stand there and be there for ten minutes, yeah. and you know I'd be going through yeah ACDC tats yeah kicks Ramones and then they'd be like you just played the soundtrack to every song I listened to in high school here's twenty bucks keep it up and I'd yeah. be like oh wow great bad. thank you and <laughs> you know like I've I've never forgotten that stuff but yeah it, it, it's, it is you know, it like, is it's very important and you know. Yeah. D- to, you know, obviously, to to then be performing, you know, with someone like Richie Ramone, I mean, oh, yeah. how, how did how did that come about? Um, Richie was one of the first people I met when I first went to Hollywood, start of twenty thirteen. Yeah, and the band I was with were managed by Vicky Hamilton, that managed like Guns and Roses, mm. all those bands, and she introduced me to Rodney Bingenheimer and Richie Ramone at Cantor's Deli. Mm. So we sat down for dinner and what happened was then Richie got up and did the Ramones something to do with us at my first show in Hollywood. We right. did Bar Sinister on a Saturday. So we're like, we, ju- we just landed and we went straight there and then we had to play, I think the next day or something. And yeah, that's kind of how we met and me and him just hit it off instantly and kept in touch. And before I joined his band in 2016, that, you know, be like, you know, the, the Super Bowl's on, we're having, you know, drinks at my friend's house. Do you yeah. want to come around and hang out? And we were just mates. I'd be like, yeah, man. And so yeah. we just, you know, hang out and shoot the shit. And yeah. then in 2016, he goes, you know, my guitarist, I, my guitarist left. I need a, I need a guitar player. Do you want to do it? And it was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you've even got, I mean, you know, that obviously the Ramones um, uh, influence is showing through on the new single, which we're going to talk about, uh, you know, shortly, uh, because the drummer, for the Ramones, actually joined you on the on the single. Yes, yes. Richie played on the EP. The the drummer that played on Alone with You was actually Chris Moy, who was yes. Richie Ramones' drummer. Because yes. what Richie Ramone does live is, is different he, to the Ramones. Yeah. Oh uh, well, because what he does live is a I'd say it's like sixty or seventy percent mm. Ramones songs. Because he wrote songs like Somebody Put Something in My Drink. Yeah. Like Smash You. All those songs, like he was, he was a songwriter as well, like in in the Ramones. Mm. But because he sings and plays, there's only so long. Especially some of the stages we played are like pretty big. Yeah, there's only so long you can spend at the very back behind a drum kit when people yeah. have come to see you. So what Richie would do was he'd start the set behind the drum kit, and you know, we do Durango '95, um, Teenage Lobotomy, Somebody Put Something in My Drink. And, you know, a few songs like that. And then what had happened is he'd go to the front of the stage and jump on the mic and he'd have another drummer that was basically his yes. protege or, you know, Padawan yeah. <laughs> yeah. step in. And Chris Moy was his live and touring drummer. Like we were roommates on in yeah. hotel rooms, but all around the world. And um, so come time to do the record, I, you know, I went to Richie and he's like, you know, how many songs you got? And I got 15 songs. So he goes, yeah. all right, that's a lot. How about we split them? I'll, you know, I'll do some. Chris Moy can do the rest. And it was sadly the last recording Chris had ever played yeah. on because he died of a heart attack last year. Yeah. Well. But Rich, Richie played all. The, Richie played the drums on Little Misunderstood, the, the new single that comes out October eighteenth. Yeah, fantastic, 
Fantastic. So, Look, great new song too, I've got to say. I, I, I love the sound. It's real um, uh, alone with you were talking about. Uh, if I can say that it is has a real quintessential 80s rock vibe to it. You know, it, it's not it's not like oh, there's a new rock song. You've you've actually channeled the and maybe it's because you know the Ramones, Richie Ramones, and and you know was actually on on the the album. You've got that influence there. Oh, I uh, definitely, and it, it's I uh, I've talked about this a bit. It wasn't really a conscious. I just made the record, and I yeah. I basically wrote the songs and recorded them the way I wanted to hear them. I just yeah. went, you know, I, I wanted to make something that if I heard, I'd go mad, and yeah. that that's what I did. But definitely looking at it retrospectively, it's you know. Like the joke I make is, you know, I'm, I'm caught somewhere between CBGBs and an Australian pub. <laughs> you know, it, it's like there's definitely that New York and Ramones influence in there, but yeah. there's also, you know, a lot of the Tats, yeah. ACD, like the vinyls. I, I love all, Jets. I, I love all that stuff. So I guess if you kind of throw the two together, yeah, that's, that's what Maybe you get. Throw a little bit of Scar in there as well. You know. Oh yeah, de- 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 there's there's some Scar in there as well. Like some of the others, there's a few songs on the record that are you're gonna be like. Man, this is like rancid. Yeah, and again, it's just the accumulation of all my experiences growing up. Yeah, yeah. Now it's the band is called the Redback Spiders, uh, yeah. which I love. Uh, very Aussie. Uh, <laughs> to to the Americans understand what a redback spider is, so they go, "What? What's that?" They the quickest I go, it's base. It's a cousin of the Black Widow, and they yeah, go, right. "Oh." Okay. But when they Google it, you're like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah. But um. It was, you know, because I'm very proudly Australian and, you know, even in my time out in the States, it's like yeah. I got very known as the Australian guy. Yeah. And I, I I love that. So come time to pick a band name, I wanted something that sounded tough and like a rock and roll band, but was also Aussie. Mm. And, mm. you know, in I was chatting to the other guitarist, Hayden McGugan, and I went, I want something that, you know, says we're not here to fuck spiders. <laughs> and then I went, spider, redbacks, but. You know, yeah. jumped on like it hasn't been done and then after that it was and it's the same letters as ronnie simmons oh my god mine like <laughs> so that's kind of how it came about i didn't even think of that that's very yeah, that's R- clever. rs rs, RS. And the RS yeah, yeah 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 i mean there's a few words that that have rs in the title and i don't think that <laughs> yeah, one of them yeah. is is suitable for your music because it's not yeah, <laughs> yeah that, 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 that you know that that was definitely an afterthought but yeah, it was one yeah. of those like oh I really love, uh, you know, the, 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 your, your influences that you've got, and that you, you know, you've 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 grown up with and and learnt basically learnt from the Aussie masters, and you know the the um, you know the metal bands, the the hair metal bands, if I can say that, uh, in you know in LA. What would you say to uh, to say a new up and coming guitarist or, or you know someone who who is just sort of learning the ropes what would you say to them what advice would you give them to get to where you are now practice 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 mm. um you know learn that thing inside out till it becomes a part of you like learn music theory learn your guitar but also figure out what it is about guitar that's inspired you to pick it up like what artists have inspired you what do you like about it well okay what is it about their sound that you like okay if that's the case what amp do they use what guitar do they use what pickups are in that guitar kind of reverse engineer all the things you love yeah Uh, but also listen to as much as you can like if you like a band figure out what they listen to like just Mm -hmm. immerse yourself in as much as you possibly can that you like and lean into your strengths, but be aware of your weaknesses. Yeah. If there's something you're not very, very good at, don't shy away from it. That's what practicing's for. Yeah, right. That's what rehearsals are for. But when you're on stage or if you're in front of people, lean into what you're strong at. Love and that. and then behind the curtain, you know, if there's anything you can't do, it's oh, I'm not very good at that. Well, in your practice regime, focus on that. Mm. Delegate a little bit of time every day. If there's something you can't do, that's how it works. Eventually, you'll get you'll get to do it, but Figure out, you know, fi- figure out what it is you love about it and what makes it enjoyable. Yeah, and embrace that because if you want to do it, you gotta love it. Yeah, you gotta love it, and you gotta know why you, you know, 
it, it might, you know, it might be easy at first, but you know, it, it's not an easy road to take. Mm. And if mm. you really, really want it, go for it, man. Mm. Just because it's, go for it's it. tough. It can be tough. I mean, you know, you talk about long way to the top. I mean, you know, it is. It, it is. It, it's not easy. And it's like, you, you, you're going to face discouragement. You're going to, mm. you're going to face hardship, especially, you know, if you want to, you know, people ask me about LA. It's like, well, I jumped on a plane and I moved there with a bag and a guitar and yeah. I just did it. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you know, I didn't have a family to call. Like if my car broke down, I can't, you know, there was, you know, mum and dad were across the Pacific Ocean. I That's had, you a, know, I, yeah. I had to rely on my relationships and friends and myself at the end of the day. And yeah. also keep in mind that no one's ever going to care as much about your music as you are. Yeah. And once you have that kind of in, in your mind at all times, it makes dealing with things a little easier. Mm. Like it's very hard to not take things personally, yeah. but the reality of not even the music industry life, like you win some, you lose some, like mm. it doesn't mean you've got to like it, Yeah. but just keep that in mind. Like, you know, if you fall, it, it, it sounds so corny and cliche, but if you fall off the horse, get back on it. Like, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, for, for every one win, there could be 99 losses. Yeah. But you've got one win. Yeah. Just celebrate and, the wins. Ce celebrate the wins and learn from the losses, learn yeah. from the defeats. Yeah. And, you know, how can I do this better next time? And also accepting sometimes that that's just how it goes, mm. you know. Mm. But mm. The, the, the worst thing that can happen is you put the guitar down and you quit because then, you you know, then you're never going to win. Yeah. Like, yeah. So... And but that comes back to you got to love it yeah. because if you if you're in it for the wrong reasons you're not going to last you know it's it's yeah. got to be you have this feeling in here like this is me and just follow that feeling and nurture that don't lose it you got such a passion for what you do i love that i think that that's something that that you know we all need to have in in everything that we do um do you is there any music that you're listening to now that you just go, wow, that's that's just blowing me away. Oh man. That's a really putting you on the spot, sorry. Yeah, you totally <laughs> put me on the spot. <laughs> oh man. Far out. I, I've been listening to lots of back to the scar thing. Jay of the cat. Like Jay of the cat. Jay of the cat. Like mm. I really dig what they're doing. Like that's a really cool mix of punk and scar. Yeah. Like that became my driving music in LA for a while. And I'm, I'm actually in, in touch with the guitarist. We, we chat, you know, we're mutual, Great. mutual respect for what each of us do, but they're really, really cool. Um, far out, you know, it's going to sound odd to say, but I, I love the new Eminem record. You wouldn't expect me. To <laughs> so do I, so do I. I think it's great. It's you know, like, it's... you know, that, that came yeah, out yeah. and I was like, yeah, he's, you know, he, he's just going for the throat. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but as far as new rock bands coming out, it's been cool to be back in Sydney. Like, you yeah. know, there's a young band Avalanche that have come out that we've done some shows with. Yeah. Like, their, their heads and hearts are definitely in the right place. Yeah. yeah very but, cool. Um, very cool. Yeah. I, man, I, I got to give some more thought. I, I know the moment we finish this, I'm going <laughs> to walk away and go, oh. Oh, I just thought of like 10 <laughs> bands. Man. Well, uh, I, I dig the Louts in Melbourne. I dig Louts. They're cool. Yeah. And yep. there's another band, Chisel, in the UK, like not cold Chisel. They're just called Chisel. Just chisel, yep. Similar vibe of that, you know, real, like, it's almost Sharpie-esque. It's very yeah. just aggressive. Like, I, that's cool. But um, I'm, I'm always on the hunt for new stuff. Yeah, so, cool. You know. Cool. Well, look, you've got, uh, you know, obviously your new album, uh, the EP's out. Uh, the single is out. Uh, you definitely have to check it out. It's called uh, Alone With You. The EP is Bite Part One. And that's out? Uh, that comes out November 22nd. November 22nd. Excellent. The, 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 the second single drops October 18th. That's a little misunderstood with Richie Ramone on drums. Yep. And yep. then the EP drops November 22nd. And you can expect Bite Part 2 next year. Fantastic. Fantastic. I love Alone With You. Can't wait to hear the rest of the uh, the EP. Can't wait to hear the new single with uh, with Richie Ramone. So uh, make sure you send it over and uh, and we'll take a listen to it and play it when uh, when you you uh, get it out. Oh, thanks, mate. Definitely. Yeah. 
you guys, the band rocks. I love I love the new sound, and I've got to say, uh, in terms of of um, of up and coming talent, you are an absolute inspiration for what you do. So uh, yeah, keep on Thanks. keep on rocking with with what you do. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Hit plus or follow to subscribe to the podcast, and head over to Facebook at the Long Way to the Top Podcast and give us a like. Keep on rocking, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Long Way to the Top.